Karen the Warp Spinster here. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I was so embarrassed by how pitted the other side of my mat is, I turned it over to this side, which is not stellar, but it's not as bad as the other side. I usually do not use the ruled side of the mat because I don't use that for measuring and I don't want to confuse myself. And yes, I need a new mat. I just haven't gotten to a local quilt store to pick one up yet. And it's a lesson. Do as I say, not as I do. But changing your rotary blade makes life easier on your mat. And a fresh mat, in turn, makes it easier to do your cutting and it's easier on your blades. Just saying. Today, I want to do some more with two and a half inch squares and some one and a half inch squares and you know some other things thrown in. Someone on my Facebook group, no Instagram, sorry, an Instagram follower and I apologize I didn't look up your name. I don't think it was Diane but I'm sorry. Thank you. Anyway, she made the comment that it reminded her of Alice in Wonderland and I said oh, well of course the the Red Queen the Queen of Hearts. So I decided I would continue with that theme. It is, um, well, let me show you the block from last time. But, and here is the block that prompted that comment. So obviously we have, you know, kind of wild and crazy black and white stripes and the reds, and then we have the little hearts here. So continuing with that theme, I have I'm going to start with a, a small representation here. We'll see how that goes. And I have some more red and pink scraps from my two and a half and one and a half inch stashes. And then I also have some black and white stripes here. The first thing I want to do is put some sort of strip along here. It might be a bias strip and it will be made from one or the other of the stripes, depending on how wild and crazy I want to be. <laughs> and I will use, do make them using one of these. These are from Clover and they're bias tape makers. I have another video where I show how to use these and I'll try to remember to post it down in the description. So you can go back and take a look at that. So I'm anticipating doing that. I could also piece a stripe in there, could be straight, could be curved. I don't know, we're gonna explore some of that and see what we think. I always appreciate people's comments and suggestions for how it might've been done differently. I appreciate that. It, it means we're all thinking and we're all helping each other. The first thing I'm going to do is a bias strip and I will use one of these. Uh, these are from Clover, they're bias tape makers. I have a video where I demonstrate how to use these and I will try my best to remember <laughs> to post the link to that particular video down in the description. I will make one, I'm planning to do it with this wider black stripe. That may turn out to be overwhelming. So while I'm at it, I probably will also do one with this narrower stripe. All right, I use the larger, this is the half inch bias tape maker to make the larger stripe and then the quarter inch one to make the smaller stripe. And I blipped right there. So pay no attention to the man behind the screen. Sorry, mixed metaphor. <laughs> different movie, different story. And I think that was a good decision. This would have been, I don't know, that would just be overwhelming in that size, I think. I, I might someday try it the other way. So my plan is to, I could do a curve, although I didn't actually make these bias there. They would have to be gentle curves, but that's what I'd want anyway. If I wanted a really good curve in there, I would have, cut the strips on the bias. I could do it straight. I could do it curved. I could do it straight part way and then curve. Oh, that might be kind of interesting. 
and kind of like that idea actually Let's say we go with that for the moment and then to bring in the two and a half and one and a half inch blocks or squares I'm planning on having them tumbling across here now here's a disadvantage of the stripe is that it might shadow well it's not might it will shadow through on this lighter question is do I care don't know yet I could line it with a little something to prevent that I could also of course cut that cut the strip behind there that's not appealing to me <laughs> at all and I just want to have these sort of tumbling I guess maybe it's a takeoff on the tumbling block block <laughs> or quilt tumbling block quilts and for a little variety I want to bring in some smaller squares here have them tumbling as well should have had a bigger piece of fabric to do this shouldn't I I could also cut these into different sizes so they're a little smaller than two and a half um, depends on the constraints of my block but I could do something like that in fact I might curve that a little more bring this down I could also you know I have all these little tiny triangles that I could also toss in here just to make a collage sort of effect. Those can always be added in later. Don't know how I feel about them at just this moment. It does kind of add something though, doesn't it? Get a little something going in. Oh, 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 oh. If this is Alice and the Queen, that's what I'm gonna call it this block, or maybe I'm ended up doing a small quilt with these, don't know. Then this could be Alice going down the rabbit hole. Oh, so we go straight for a while because she drops down the hole and then, you know, she starts tumbling. I don't know if that's actually how it happened, but it could have, it could have been that way. Probably should have done a bias strip now that I look at it, but I think I can work that around as I'm stitching it. And then whatever Alice might have brought down with her. <laughs> oh, I like that idea. Sorry, I'm shaking the table. I'm kind of liking that. If I replace this with the narrower strip, how does that look? This is Alice's trajectory. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. Okay, do I like it with the narrower or the wider? You know, I think I'm going to like the wider just because it's such a graphic bold. And it's, you know, Alice in Wonderland. It's a little bit bold. This will be on top, of course. Yes, I think it definitely needs the wider stripe. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set these aside, hoping that I have at least some general idea of how I liked them. And then I'm going to take this strip and applique it, machine applique it. Um, of course, I have a choice of threads. I could do white, black, or clear. I think I'm going to do white just because it will blend in with the background. And of course I could just do an edge stitch, not very funky. I could do a zigzag, which would be one of my standards in lieu of a satin. I know I don't want to do a satin. And I don't know what I'll use for a decorative stitch. I played with some before in another video which again, I will try to remember to put in the description. So I may do a decorative stitch. We shall see. Pretty sure I'm gonna use white thread though. 
I will do that. I uh, actually, I'm going to, I did bring some stabilizer with me because I knew I was going to want to do it with the squares because I'm going to end up applicating those on as well. And I really need some foundation underneath it. And I may as well have it underneath this as well because it will just stitch better if I've got a stabilizer under there. So I will do that and I shall return. While I was looking at the stitches, I had been thinking, well, I'm going to need something that has pretty good coverage. It can't be just, you know, a little stitch here and then something foo -foo and another long stitch because it needs to cover raw edges. But I was thinking about these raw edges. This doesn't have a raw edge, so I could do something else. I'm doing checkerboard, which probably <laughs> means that's a moot observation, but I will return when I have checkerboarded this. It might almost be cool in black. Oh, or red. Oh, what do we think about red? No, we're going to stick with white. <laughs> Maybe we'll explore red later. I'm probably going to take this out, but I wanted to show it to you. It is, I like the stitch, but it doesn't really show it to advantage when I'm using white thread, and I think it would have pretty much the same effect in black. So red might do it. Um, I would also put the stitches probably a little closer together, but I'm just not sure that's the stitch that I want here after all. So I am I really want the emphasis to be on these rather than this. I mean, I want that to show obviously, but I don't know that I want it to pull the eye from the other. So I'm gonna take this out and I may just do a simple zigzag. Here's the trajectory of Alice. I ended up using a cross stitch, which is a, a double stitch, makes it a little more bold. I also ended up, because I'm using white and it wouldn't really show on the background, I used a one, what I call a one-sided stitch so that if I'm aiming my presser foot right along the edge here, all of the stitching takes place to the left of that so that it's there's also a version to go to the right, but then all of my stitching is visible, easily visible on the black and white. So that's the trajectory of Alice. I didn't pin anything, so of course the stabilizer is crooked, but it doesn't matter. It's going to all be cut away or whatever. Uh, Probably a wash away stabilizer would be good. I don't happen to have any at hand, so I'm using, I'm pretty sure this is tear away. May or may not be enough perforation to do it really easily, but if worse comes to worse, I can do cut away. Now, what about the shadowing here? I think I'm not worried about that. Surprisingly, it isn't that shadowy. What would happen if I just put a piece of white under there? getting into lots of layers, which isn't going to be a problem for my long arm. I've seen what I can do, and it's just a small bit. So I could do that. In fact, I might want to fuse that on the edge, or maybe I'll just glue tack it. Hmm. Then I would probably need to do the same thing with this, unless it isn't touching very much. Mm -hmm. All right, let me give that a go just because I'm beginning to really like this block <laughs> and I don't want to in the end say, gosh, I wish I'd done that. So I'm going to trim that. I'm not cutting very solidly because I don't want to rock the table. Yes, in addition to a new mat, I need a new table here. It's a trestle table and it's just not all that. It's got some funky design issues. There is one. This one won't need to have that done to it. Give it enough room here. Or a seam along the edge. Doesn't matter if those overlap. In my brain, when I first saw this in my brain, 
these were sort of overlapping and then I was going to have seams there and then um, applique on the edges that were raw, but I don't know. I don't think I'm seeing that anymore. It might be another piece of it, but I don't think it's going to be this one. I'm wondering if I want to trim a little bit off of, I don't want those going the same angle, which means that one needs to change. Might be kind of fun to do some fun embroidery on that, but you know, I think I really do want that to be smaller. Here I am, cutting my stash pieces again. I'm just gonna edit out the wobbly bits because it's annoying me. I'm sure it probably is annoying you as well. Yeah, that's better, I think. Gives a little bit of a transition between that and the larger one. Now, of course, there's the issue of what color of thread am I going to use? Do I want to use red, pink, black, white? And I think I really do want to put these in at a later point after I get these stitched down. Maybe not that regularly, but definitely need to have those. All right. It's crunch time. I don't have to use the same stitch on all of them, of course. And I don't have to use the same thread for all of them either. Wonder if I use red on the pink ones and then pink on this, these two. Well, first of all, I do have to go down and Get some thread, so I will do that. I have lots of colors in rayon that I use on my embroidery machine. All things being equal, I think I'd rather go with cotton. I have some metler here in colors that I think will be okay. So I think I will go with those. The question is just what goes on what. I think pink on this one and probably that one. Maybe I'll use pink on all of them. Definitely on that one. I think definitely on that one. Red on that and that, I don't know. Maybe I don't want to mix them. If I do, I'd want to mix them a little more evenly, I think. Quandary, 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 quandary. Well, I'm going to pin these on and then I'm going to do that top one. And then I'll just figure out the rest later. I did a simple zigzag in the pink. Well, full disclosure, I didn't put the pink in to begin with and I'm stitching happily along as I, oops, wrong color. So. I do have pink loaded up, which means that just because I'm lazy, if there's something else I want to do in pink, I want to do it now. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe this little guy. I think that will be next. Will it be a zigzag or something else? I don't know. We'll find out. Oh my gosh, I just found a turtle stitch on my machine, which if I do other parts of Alice in Wonderland, I think that is going to come in handy. I did a zigzag also on the smaller square, but I changed the settings on the machine. I made it a little denser, a little closer together and a little narrower. So on this one, it's 3.0 and 0.8. And the other one was 3.5 and one. So, I think that's it for the pink, don't I? <laughs> and then red for those two. Well, let's do it. And am I going to still do the zigzag? I'm actually liking the zigzag, 
because I need something that when I get to a corner and turn it, it's not going to be breaking up a motif. So if I've got a fairly long, complicated stitch, like, I don't know, a leaf or something, then it may not turn out right at the corner so that when I turn the corner, it starts a new leaf. And the zigzag is nice because it's a very short <laughs> stitch. So I think I'll continue with the zigzag. It adds texture and a little bit of color contrast, but it isn't distracting. So it isn't jarring. Sorry, I just really like that black in there. I will do these two in red with a zigzag. Two things I am noting to myself that I don't mind doing applique this way on squares. Of course, I haven't used very much of my stash doing this, but really the point of what I'm doing is to play, not to use up my stash. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm, I'm liking this Alice in Wonderland theme. I think I'm going to call the quilt Alice Wondered because I do a lot of, I wonder if I did this on here. Anyway, um, so I'm pretty happy with that. Also, second thing, there will be some raveling inevitably because I'm doing raw edge using a fusible web would control it somewhat, but probably not forever <laughs> and not completely. I'm all right with a little raveling, surprisingly. I think that's going to be okay. Now I need to think about what I'm going to be doing with these black triangles because I'm sure I want them, really. We, we just have to have them, don't we? Because it kind of balances out that black there and just gives it another shape for some interest. And more things tumbling down the rabbit hole. Oops, ruined that one. And just scatter a few of them. An odd number, so I like to do odd numbers, especially threes, maybe some that are tumbling off to the side, some that touch the squares. Here's the other thing I was thinking. You'll notice that I'm I'm very close over here and I could tear that out and redo it. Wouldn't be a huge deal. So I can see that it's going to, if I do a quarter inch seam there, it's going to cut that off. I don't think I'm worried about that. I may change my mind and decide to move it over. But I'm thinking there's still a lot of white air, more white area than I want, who can believe it, in this particular block, I think. I'm going to try doing, oh, oh, what if I did, Do I want it out of the larger fabric or the smaller? I'm thinking, what if I did a, now let me use this. I think I'm gonna want the wider stuff. I'm going to press that open again, that strip I had done for this strip. What if I, this is just gonna be kind of a, by the seat of the pants thing. What if I did some a couple of squares that are the black and white stripe? I don't know. I may not like it as much as I thought I would, but <laughs> let's see what we've got. Nope, I don't like it. Because this is such a singular piece and it's kind of a focus so I don't think I want that. It ties it to that, but I don't know that I really want it tied to that. I want that just to speak for itself. It doesn't need a supporting cast. I mean, this is the queen of hearts after all. She's probably saying off with her head. I want the heavier bit down here, just as a design thing. 
I think that's too much though. I really think I only want about three of them on there. And then I'm thinking maybe the background, or background, the quilting <laughs> will help to take care of all of that background. I'm thinking of it in terms, say, in relation to this. This is denser. Well, I don't know. I'm looking at it from kind of a side-ish angle instead of right on top of it, which makes a difference. But I think that's as much as I want to do on here is to put these black pieces on. Do I have black thread? <laughs> I do. I have black thread with me. So I will stitch those on. I might use my handy dandy glue stick again to keep those in place. They're a little more fiddly and it's more likely my finger will get in the way. And I know for a fact that my machine will happily stitch through my thumb and thumbnail if it's in the way. So <laughs> I don't want to do that again. All right, I will stitch those on and we'll come back and assess and think about next steps next week. And our finished sort of block. I think it's finished. I'm not sure it's finished. I may end up doing a larger version of this, but this was a lot of fun for today. One thing about these black triangles, these tips are probably going to tend to ravel more than on the squares because they're so narrow. And I've tried to minimize that a little bit anyway, and also to turn a cleaner corner of that really acute corner. So as I approached it, I narrowed my strip. I left the strip stitch. I left the length the same, but I narrowed it down so that when I turned and came back this way, the stitch going that direction got a little bit here. The first time I didn't crank it down enough, but then the stitch as it starts here and stitches over there for the first stitch doesn't go over into the uh, background that much. And then as I came back here, then I lengthened or widened my stitch again. As I got down here, I narrowed it, but there are still going to be little thready bits hanging out there. Okay by me, she says as she continues to cut them off. I'll get over that. That is going to do it for this, I think. I have been kind of thinking about what if I did a border, even on a couple of sides? Maybe where she's come from? I don't know. It, it just seems like it might be, or even a little bit of just a narrow border on the edge. And then I could kind of fudge a little bit here so I don't cut off so much. Although if I'm gonna cut off a corner of the square, I may as well cut it off purposefully, right? It might be an interesting edge. I still want a little something on that background and maybe it's the crazy quilter in me who wants to throw in some beads falling down too, which I don't want to do before I quilt it. So that will come later. I kind of like it, so I'm calling it good. On Sunday, I'm going to do a bit more with this bit. And next Wednesday, I'm going to continue with the Alice Wondered concept. Maybe more with the Red Queen, or the Queen of Hearts. Why do I keep saying the Red Queen? The Queen of Hearts and... We'll take it from there. Maybe something other than the Queen of Hearts. I'll have to brush up on my Alice. I know we've got the turtle and the Mad Hatter and the, ooh, the Cheshire Cat. Ooh, this could be a lot of fun. All right, <laughs> that's it, sorry. I digress a lot. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I hope I will see you on Sunday 
and or Wednesday. In the meantime, as always, be well, be happy, be quilting. Peace out. <music>